After dropping the first video on layout design fundamentals, which covered layout spacing, I decided to make a three-part series. Most people recognize these icons from word processing tools like Google Docs or Microsoft Word. The same icons are found in all design tools like Figma, Sketch, and Adobe. In today's video, we'll go over the next important thing in layout design, alignments. Alignments help you create a visual consistency throughout your layout. We make use of fictional guidelines in either our horizontal or vertical axis to help you align your elements in order to create structure. This becomes really helpful when you have multiple elements within a group or a section making a layout nice and clean. To make things super easy we'll go over all of the different alignments grouped into each alignment axis. First we'll go over horizontal alignments and then the vertical ones. Let's go! Horizontal alignment is what's set on the horizontal x-axis going from left to right. Left alignments are the most commonly used in the horizontal axis in the western world, especially for text. Knowing the exact starting point for each row of text makes it easier to read or scan text faster. This is also a common starting point for alignment of other elements on a page or a screen since we usually scan pages of content in a Z-like pattern. It starts from the top left corner and ends in the bottom right corner. Right alignment is not as common as left, however this is still often used in a lot of context when you group data or actions inside of a component. On a social media post component, like on Twitter for example, the ellipsis icon is right aligned. The same goes for the floating action button in the bottom right corner. Center alignment in the horizontal axis is commonly used in components that contain an icon or a button, but when it comes to text, it's ideal to not center align the text block if it exceeds three rows of text. This is due to poor legibility that it creates in large chunks of textual content. So a vertical alignment is set on the vertical axis going from bottom to top. Top alignment is most commonly used and also the default setting in most tools like Figma. So when you create a new text layer, you'll see that Figma and most other tools automatically sets the vertical alignment of the text layer to top alignment. As I referred to earlier, this is most intuitive to users because of the increase in findability. Users commonly start at the top left corner and end at the bottom right. Now by this point, you should have figured out how bottom alignment is intended to work. It sticks to the bottom. So when is this useful? For instance, if you have an image thumbnail element with a title placed on top of the image, you may want to align the text element to the bottom. If you exceed one row of text, the next row will fall all the way to the bottom, making sure your text layer always aligns with the bottom edge of the thumbnail container. And last but not least, we've got the center alignment, which we have in both the horizontal and the vertical axis. So similar to the last example, we center align vertically the content inside buttons and icons. But this is also helpful in header elements as well, in combination with a horizontal left alignment for instance. Now that we've wrapped up part two of these videos, I'm looking forward to share the next one on dimensions and scale. I really hope you find these videos valuable and if you do, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications and hit the like button below for more videos like this. See you guys in a few. Peace.